The only real hope and change you'll ever get is from God. It's going to come from the Lord or it's not going to come at all. It's going to come when you admit that you can't do it and that you've got to have His help. There's a certain um, set of procedures these guys have concerning the Bible. They have the Bible. They have the Bible, guys. They do. They know all about Christ. They know about the Bible. They read and study Scripture. But they believe themselves to be the holders of the secrets that common man does not have. They believe themselves to have knowledge you can never have. And they've already messed up. We're going to learn about some of that today. So I'm going to go over that so it won't be confusing. Uh, so that you guys understand what they, uh, a general description of Masons are. They're always recruiting. A lot of, uh, believe it or not, you're going to find out police officers, of uh, firefighters, of uh, professional uh, services, and all these different things, how many people are involved with the Masons, right? Now, for your safety and mine, well, basically for your safety, so that you don't get involved in some altercation of a total different type, we're just going to cover the basics so that you have an understanding of what these guys are doing and the influence they have upon you right now. They have it in their dockets about the flat earth. Do you guys know that? They did that. They have it in their dockets about blue beam. Do you guys know that? You didn't know that, did you? They do. And sometimes when you know this and you hear people talking, see, there are good people out there, good people out there, but they have information that seems like it's absolutely on the money, but it's not. This world is a very sticky place. And sometimes you can hold a truth defined in a very specific way and then it becomes a lie but you'll believe in that lie absolutely because it's plausible blue beam is one of those things project blue beam what people refer to as project blue beam i'm going to show you something on that too so so that you can understand something because wouldn't it be a shame if people actually believed that an event was blue beam but it was for real wouldn't it be a shame you have folks that argue over a flat earth or round earth which is, in my opinion, is a big waste of time. It is. It's a waste of time because knowing the shape of the earth is not going to help nor hinder you. It's not. A lot of people, they already know something is wrong with the world, and they act on that. The problem is these higher-ups understand that people act on those things, and so they give them something. They give them a tool to rebel against. They know people are talking about the flat earth. They know people are talking about different subjects. They know all of it, and they're feeding it. Why? Because they understand that people, they have discernment, a natural God-given discernment. They know something is wrong in this world. They know something is not being presented as, as the way it really is. And so they give them something to fill. That, that craving to understand what the world is, is wrong. Who's lying? In all societies, you're always going to have someone who's lying. And so they give them the liar. That also is part of a ritual that they do, that they have the world deceived by. So when people take these stories and embrace them, thinking they have information against, you know, these higher-ups, these people who are in charge, they're laughing at them. Because they know it's not going to impact their lives. See, see a person in prison, they're locked in prison falsely, but they're behind bars. And so this person says, you know what? This jail is corrupted, right? It's corrupted. These people are corrupted. And so after five years, this person is still talking about how the jail is corrupted. If they're going to give this person, you know, what is corrupted, and guess what that does? It satisfies a person to know what is corrupted and that person will go tell others here's the point though they're still behind bars they'll never be free that way do you all see that they'll never be free so they give people arguments this is something that the cia does they'll plant stories people adopt these stories and they tear down entire nations this way if the CIA or the USA does not like a specific president, you better believe they're going to interfere with the people. They're going to give the people something to start tearing down society. So you got to be careful these days. That's why it's good to be spiritually minded so that you have the actual truth, so that you can look through lies, so that you can look through these deceits. And what people carry on the Internet most often are just counterintelligence conversations. They're not really aware of the origins of that stuff. See, because it's not about knowing exactly what's going on. No. Because a guy in a prison, is it going to matter when he's locked behind bars if he understands if it's a flat earth or not? 
notice, he's still going to be behind bars. But he doesn't know this. He's, that's a comfort to him. Listen to me, folks. It's a comfort to somebody who's incarcerated to think that they have a truth over the heads of their jailers. It's a comfort. They think they have the upper hand. But do they have the upper hand if they're locked up? No, they don't. They're still locked up. Do you guys get that? That person can come up with everything behind bars, but they're still behind bars. So what does that person actually need? If he's innocent, that person needs to be freed, not to have the goods of their jails. But in order to get that person to calm down, to accept their conditions in a rebellious way, they plant a story. They give them a story. So that person will sit in that jail cell with a smile, thinking that they have the goods over the jailers. Now they don't complain about being jailed. Now they're talking about the jailers doing crooked things. And they're, they're going to spend years convincing everybody else of this, but they're still locked behind bars. It has nothing to do with freedom. It's an illusion of freedom to give people ammunition to believe in, to think that they have something over the heads of somebody else. And all the while they're doing this, they're still behind bars. That same thing is happening now. People are oppressed. They're not making changes in the White House. They're not making changes in policy. They're just spreading stories about what they know is a lie or what they know is the truth. And they're sitting back affecting zero, no change, talking about what they are armed with. Oh, we've got the goods on President Biden. But they're not doing anything because he's still President Biden. Or we got the goods on Trump, but they're not doing anything. Or we got the goods on, on Bill Clinton, but they're, well, somebody did something in there, right? But do you guys understand that? So if you give a person theater, that's all it is, is theater. You give a person theater, they're going to be entertained. And every time a person is entertained, they stop complaining. Every time a person is entertained, they stop plotting to be free. They sit back and they immerse themselves in the entertainment. That's what's happened to just about everybody on this planet. They have become complicit with their conditions. They can sit back and complain all day, but they're complaining within what's being shown to them. Do you all see that? So there's no change whatsoever. Zero change, yet everybody has the truth. Isn't that funny? They all have the truth, but no one is making change. Don't let them do you like that. That's what's happening. Don't let them do you. See, once you can brag, if, if for example, this, this alien stuff, right? Suppose you have the truth about aliens. Okay, then what? What's going to be next? A lot of people say, well, if we know the truth about aliens, we can have zero point energy. No, you can't. It's just, just not going to work that way. It's not going to happen that way. You see that? Don't let them do you like that. That's when you have to realign your life for those things that matter. Now, I'll tell you this. There's something about you that Satan goes much further on because he can't afford for you to be free. Somebody says, what this might mean that they have the goods on Biden? That's what people say every single day, don't they? They have the goods on Biden. They have the goods on Trump. They have the goods on Bush. They have the goods on all the presidents. Yet they're doing absolutely zero. Nothing. Nothing changes. Is my point. Nothing changes. We've had, How many presidents have we had that said, and everybody believed they were going to change the world. The world is getting worse and worse and worse and worse and worse. We still have the same problems we had a hundred years ago. That is not advancement. The only thing that we have are new toys and better transportation. New materials, that's it. So the quality of life has gone up just a tad, which has truly made people a lot lazier because now we face health problems because a human body is not made to sit for hours at a time. It's not. So we're like frogs being slowly boiled, but we think we have the upper hand and we'll think that way until we die. People die in that condition, having done nothing in their lifetime, having affected no change in their lifetime. The Bible says forever learning and never coming to the knowledge of the truth. Because when you have the truth, guess what? Change is with truth. Change is never absent truth. Things start to alter when you have the real truth. Now, if I told you that this printer paper was white, that is the truth. If you have that truth, that's not going to go far. Why? Because that truth comes from something that man did. You don't want man's truth. You want the truth. 
about this truth. You have authority over every single spirit that would ever dare come to this planet or rise up from inside the planet or come down to the planet. You have absolute authority over them in the name of Jesus. It's just like these people who get, who undergo these abduction things, right? Until they find out they have authority in the name of Jesus. And they say, wait a minute. If that's a, because they were convinced it was a powerful reptilian alien until they rebuked it. There are stories about people who have had these encounters in the woods with these unknown creatures they call reptilians. And when they mention the name of Jesus, these things start screeching and running for their lives. Now, come on now. They didn't know that. We're talking about a physical being that takes off and runs and breaks trees and everything else as it's yelping and running off simply because you evoked the name of Jesus. See, people don't know who they are. And if you believe the world, you're brainwashed into believing what you're not. The Lord will tell you what you are. Because you are one of his. He knows exactly what you are. But in order to find that out, you've got to hear him. See, here's the truth. I can't tell you who you are. I can show you where to find out who you are. But I cannot tell you that. The Lord knows. And guess what? I'll tell you something else. It has nothing to do with your physical body. Isn't that something? Your authority has nothing to do with your physical body. Your identity has nothing to do with your physical body nothing because all flesh is corrupted all flesh is mixed with some don't sit there and think that somehow you don't have corrupted dna in your system that's a lie they've known that for a long time salvation has nothing to do with your body and it has everything to do with your soul see how that works i'm mine see one of the biggest problems is we don't know who the other person is you don't know who it is. You really don't know. God knows you don't know. For example, there are examples in the Bible that when the end comes, your certain children may not make it. Why won't they make it? Because they're not of the Lord. The spouse, one of the spouses, may not make it. Why? Because they're not of the Lord. You know what that means? They didn't come from the same place you did. That's what it means. Your children's body, they inherit from you and the daddy or, or you and the mother. But the soul is from the Most High. The soul is not from the mommy or the daddy. The soul is from the Most High. And you are not your body. You are not your body. Your body is going to return to the dust. Unless the Lord comes and you be changed. Christ did not die on the cross so that your body can be perfected. No. You have a new vessel. There's a new heaven and a new earth. All things are new. They're uncorrupted. That's a whole other realm, a whole other dimension, a whole other place of reality. In the Old Testament, God told his people not to intermingle with certain tribes. Why did he say that? Because they were mixed with the Nephilim. You may not know this, but through this DNA collection that we talked about here at COT in 2010, and I, I only mentioned that a couple of times that they were doing DNA collection. And then I left that alone because it, people could not hear it. They were doing DNA collection. They wanted people's DNA because they're looking for specific DNA, right? Specific DNA from certain types of people so they can do whatever they do. It's kind of like recruitment. The military will go to certain colleges and they look for people with certain traits. And they want to get that, right? They want to get those people with certain traits to work with them. They do this all the time. They have collected everybody's DNA. It's been stored on a computer. It has. So they have your DNA. They have my DNA. And if you didn't give up your DNA, somebody in your family line did. Somebody you dated did. One thing you don't know, when you date someone and you're intimate with that person, there's an exchange of DNA. Did you know that? And the woman collects all DNA. Ladies, everybody you're ever intimate with, you carry the DNA of that individual. No wonder God said, don't fornicate. No wonder he said, don't commit adultery. Because you take on the characteristics of everybody you've ever been with. And now you have to fight that. No wonder people don't know who they are. These people, they have your DNA. That DNA is cataloged. You don't have to pierce the skin to get the DNA anymore either. They have better methods. 
So they have everybody's DNA, but they're looking for certain markets. Why? Because they're going to give people opportunities, right? They'll rig it to where they get people special opportunities. They know what to say to you to trigger you. You have traits in your DNA or instructions. Those instructions can tell a person that you have a high probability to respond to certain things. And so they use those certain things to call people forward of specific types. They develop things and drop them all over our heads. And they only work on people with certain DNA. Do you guys know about the um, uh, mosquito tests that were done in the USA, don't you? Back in the uh, 70s, back in the 60s and 70s and 80s, you know about that. And they, these mosquitoes were injected with a certain type of, let's say, uh, a cocktail that was only going to affect a specific type of person with a certain amount of melanin. It wasn't going to affect everybody. And so at that point, they had, they had hospitals and doctors and everybody else. If they had a patient that came in with specific symptoms, they were to call certain offices. They were to alert these offices that, hey, we got a person with the symptoms you have described. And they will check and say, okay. Now they use that information to see what works and what does not. That's what they do. So when you get sick out of the blue and go to the hospital, right, just by way of the symptoms, they already know what you have. Half of the sicknesses in this world are done that way. Common cold sent up. They've taught people, well, the common cold is everywhere and this, that, and the other. And people actually believe that. That would be okay um, until you stumble across a catalog of common colds in some classified uh, document. But why would a common cold be in a classified document marked with a very special symbol that people know who've been to NBC school, nuclear, biological, chemical school? When they've been there, they know about the insignias. They know about the special markings. So they want to see what works with people. Bio-warfare, as it seems, have it's never stopped. Plus, they're doing, you know they're doing genetic experiments. Come on. Sometimes we can be, become naive. Why? Because there's a form that says they're not supposed to do that, and we start believing it. Well, no, they can't do that, because this form says they are not supposed to do that, so they can't do that, that's not happening. That's how people live their lives. They'll sit there and read something, and they'll say, well, they can't do that. Well, what makes you say that? Because it's on that form. They can't do that. And people walk around like everything is okay. That's how the devil gets people. That's how Lucifer gets people. That's how Case Rock gets people. That's how Beelzebub gets people. Just the same way. They'll say, well, no, that, you know, that was that guy. That wasn't the devil. That was that guy. Not understanding that that guy was influenced. It is not within man to take a step by himself or on his own. Your steps are initiated, influenced, highly influenced by forces that are always at work. That's why you sit around, right? You'll sit around thinking about something. And all of a sudden, if you think right now in hindsight, listen to me. Because you can't do it when it happens. You have to think in hindsight. Remember when you were sitting there at any given time and you were thinking about something deep in thought. There was more than four, five, six, seven different suggestions coming in from somewhere. It was almost like you were at a round table. You can't do that when, when it's happening. You can do it in hindsight. You can look back and realize, wait a minute, there was a lot of, you know, things popping up when I was thinking about so-and-so. Where did that come from? Where did all these thoughts come from? One of the biggest lies is that all thoughts belong to you. That's a big lie. How did Eve hear Satan, but Adam didn't? How did that happen? How did Eve have a conversation with Satan? But Adam did not. How did that happen? We should know about men and women. I know people read ancient documents and all this kind of stuff. I know they believe in the interpretations of these ancient documents. There were clever people back then, right? Just as logical as you are. And they made things logical. I understand people read that and believe that. I do not. I believe some of it at some point, but I don't anymore. I don't believe it anymore. I know there's a, there's a, there, there's something here on this earth that everything has been manipulated. False evidence has been planted thousands of years ago. People dig it up and start believing it. Not falling for that. In the Bible, it gave us a hint. When Satan tells a lie, he tells of his own. What does that mean? He's telling you what he did in the past. Who do you think planted the evidence from the scribes who wrote down what they wrote down? People act like human beings of the past didn't lie. Like they couldn't be influenced. The kingdoms of the past were dark. 
very dark. If they weren't so dark, they would have been liberated. They would have continued to where they go. On the wall of them have horror stories of society ending, all of them. Something destroyed every single society back then. And in those societies, every single one sacrificed people. What advanced society? The Sumerians sacrificed people. Babylon sacrificed people. Not punished, sacrificed. All of them did. And people hate for, you know what, the Sumerian religion that they have right now, because that's what people are doing. They're worshipping the Sumerians. They're worshipping Thoth. They're worshipping all these Atlantic, uh, Atlantean documents that they found there. They're excited about them. All they're doing is resurrecting the old mythos. Those who believed, who worshipped demons as gods, they're doing it again. They're in high worship of these things. They're totally convinced those documents are explaining them. They're saying that people of today are holding them back from becoming what they could be. All those people who believe in those ancient writings, that's exactly what they say, that you're holding them back. You are. It's you. You're holding them back. Or it's five people, you know, in, in Europe holding everybody back. I'm going to tell you something. The Lord says nobody can hold you back spiritually you're subject to things here you're subject to the laws here on this earth you are but jimmy crack core nothing can hold you back you are to advance regardless of what happens to your body that's called being alive spiritually don't let your body slow you down today we're going to learn that if christ be in you because his body was resurrected he will add life to your body how can the Spirit of Christ be within you, right? And you have no life in your body. The quickening from the Lord comes based on purpose. It won't come. You can't just snap your fingers and here it comes. No, it's connected to a promise of the living God through Christ. And once you start walking in that promise, something happens to your body. We are human beings. We are but children. We make mistakes and go the wrong direction all the time. Let me ask you this. What keeps calling you home? Nobody's convincing you to come back to Christ. No, you're being called back to Christ, aren't you? Before anybody told you to come back to Christ, Jesus called you himself. You had that call internally. That didn't come from the influence of a person, did it? Nope. Can't you recognize that? With all these ancient documents, people knew nothing about them until they found them. Think about something. But how is it that you knew about those things in the Bible and no one read that to you? How can you confirm the Bible of all books? You can confirm the Bible as though you read it before. And when somebody reads the scripture in the Bible, you'll say, yes, that is true. That's what I've been thinking the entire time. There it is. You have internal confirmation of the word of God. You don't have internal confirmation of the tablets of Thoth, do you? You don't have internal confirmation of the Zeus records. You have internal confirmation of the word of God. Notice also in the last days perilous times shall come. For men shall be lovers of their own selves. Covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemers. It takes the grace of God to change us, folks. How can you be saved? If you're not willing to repent. And the Lord Jesus Christ said, Except you repent, ye shall all likewise perish.